Hey Expedition Kids, welcome back. I hope you guys had an awesome Christmas. Can we do something? On the count of three, will you yell out the favorite gift that you guys got for Christmas? Are you ready? You ready? Um, I'm not going to shout mine. I just want you to shout yours. And I want you to shout them really, really loud, okay? All right, are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, that sounds so awesome, really. Those are fantastic gifts. You guys got the best stuff. How amazing is that? Such cool gifts. Well, how about we do this? Let's pray and thank God for them. Have you done that yet? Mm -hmm. And let's also get it. That'll get us set up for today. All right. So bow your heads and close your eyes. God, we thank you that you are so generous to us, that you've given us so many things. We thank you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you for the gifts that we have received this holiday season. And we thank you for the gifts we've been able to give as well. Help us to be givers all the time and to learn today what you want us to know about you. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Good job. Nice job. Nice work. Nice work. All right, I hope you have your Bible. All right, we're going to get going. So do you remember seeing this kind of, can you see him? this strange Spider-Man ornament I have? <laughs> I had it. I had him a couple weeks ago. He's got a Santa hat on, and he's hanging from some holly. You remember that? Uh, I think it's funny for me to have this kind of an ornament on my tree, and he will be on my tree, believe me. Um, but we're not doing. We're, I'm just not big on superhero stuff at my house, and well, we don't have kids here, so eh, so it is kind of a strange and funny ornament, isn't it? And I'm sure you all have at least one silly, weird decoration on your holiday collection, in your Christmas tree or something that's sitting out on the table. Thankfully, as soon as the holidays are gone, these odd decorations go back in the box with the rest of the Christmas stuff until next November-ish. <laughs> this year, I think they came out in October. <laughs> Today's lesson has been about, is, is about thinking outside of the box making giving a year-round activity. Like while the Salvation Army buckets and the angel trees, they disappear after Christmas, the need for giving never ends. Hunger, sickness, homelessness are problems all year long. People are in need from December to December. Are we going to make them wait? Or are we going to help them when they need it? Don't let your giving end after the holidays. Keep on giving so that we can bless those in need when they most need it. People are weird. People do strange and weird things. And when you step back and think about it, make no sense. For example, how much sense does it make to plant a plant that you can't eat, that has no nutritional value whatsoever? Not only do you grow this plant in your yard, are you guessing what it is yet? But you have to cut it at least once a week so it doesn't get too tall. And not only that, but we also have to water that plant and fertilize it so it will grow even faster. You know what plant that is? Yep, grass. That's right. Here's another thing that makes no sense. Christmas decorations. Every family has a room somewhere in their house full of nothing but boxes jammed with ornaments and trees and garland and lights and tinsel and other red and green decorations. And once a year, once a year, we pull out all those boxes and completely redecorate our house top to bottom only to pack them away after just one month. If you think that's weird, here's one more weird thing. Every year during the month of our Christmas that our Christmas decorations are up, Everyone becomes a philanthropist. A philanthropist is a person who gives money or gifts to charity or helps needy people in other ways. We not only shell out big bucks on our family and friends, we give endlessly to this charity, that charity. We donate to the Salvation Army buckets, you know, cha ding, cha ding, cha ding, cha ding outside of Walmart. That's the Salvation Army bucket. 
We fill our manger project mangers, and we give stuff away. And then when January comes, all that giving stops. Why do we do that? Why do we give so much for one month only to stop completely a month later? It's not like all the homeless people found homes on December 26. It's not like hunger and starvation and poverty vanish with our trees and our lights. So why do we act so generous in December and forget all about the needy in January? In this series, we've talked about some of the reasons for giving. We give out of gratitude for what Jesus has done for us. We recognize there's nothing we can do to earn all Jesus has given us. We give, give so that others can, make, can know God's love. We also give because when we give to the needy, we're giving to Jesus. Whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. Remember that? So today, I want us to look outside of the shoebox or the manger. I want us to see that a giving heart isn't just another thing we take out of the closet at Christmas time. Giving is something that is needed all year long. And as followers of Christ, we need to continue giving all year long. For three years, when Jesus walked on the earth, he spent almost every day meeting the needs of others. He preached. He argued with the self-righteous Pharisees. He healed the sick. Every now and then, though, Jesus needed a break. He'd often take time to head up to a hill and pray by himself or take a nap in a boat in the middle of a storm. One day during his travels, Jesus let his disciples do a little work while he took one of his little breaks. But as we're about to see, Jesus was never really on a break. Jesus met someone who needed what he had come to give. And when the opportunity came to share that with her, he did not hesitate. Let's turn in our Bibles to John chapter 4, verses 4 through 26. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John chapter 4, verses 4 through 26. I want you to follow along as soon as you find it. Follow along with me, okay? On the way to go... on on the way he had to go through the country of Samaria. In Samaria, Jesus came to the town called Sychar. You might be familiar with this story. This town um, is near a field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus was tired from his long trip, so he sat down beside the well, and it was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to the well to get some water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. This happened while Jesus' followers were in town buying some food. The woman said, Well, I'm surprised that you would ask me for a drink. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. And Jews are not friends with Samaritans. And Jesus said, You don't know what God gives. And you don't know who asked you for a drink. And if you knew... You would have asked me, and I would have given you living water. And the woman said, Sir, where will you get that living water? The well is very deep, and you have nothing to get water with. Are you greater than Jacob, our father? Jacob is the one who gave this well to us. He drank from it himself, and also his sons and the flocks drank from this well. And Jesus answered, Every person who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give will never be thirsty again. The water I give will become a spring of water flowing inside him and I will give him and it will give him eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water and then I will never be thirsty again. And I will not have to come back here and get more water. And Jesus told her, go get your husband and come back here. And the woman answered, but I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, oh, you're right to say that you have no husband. Really, you have had five husbands, but the man you live with right now, he's not your husband. You told the truth. The woman said, sir, I can see you're a prophet. 
Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that Jerusalem is the place where people must worship. And Jesus said, Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you will not have to be in Jerusalem or on this mountain to worship the Father. You Samaritans worship what you don't understand. We Jews understand that we worship. Salvation comes from the Jews. The time is coming when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That time is now, and these are the kinds of worshipers the Father wants. God is spirit. Those who worship God must worship spirit and truth. So at the beginning of the story, the author Luke tells us that Jesus was tired. Hmm. He isn't tired after a long Christmas season. We're all tired of shopping. Busy schedules, dozens of obligations, one of the many reasons we stop giving when Christmas decorations go away and the Salvation Army buckets vanish. But then along comes a woman who has been living a life of sin. This woman appears at the well in the middle of the day, in the heat of the day. And most women in town, they gather water in the morning when the temperature is cooler. She comes when no one else is around. And this is not a woman in need of food or water or clothing, but she is in need of God's love. And Jesus was tired. He'd been traveling, preaching, teaching, healing nonstop for months. He needed a break, just like anyone. But Jesus knew that people didn't stop needing him when he was off duty. So Jesus gave her a message that would change her life. And it's silly how we stop giving when January rolls around. If anything, there are more people in need after Christmas because of the colder temperatures, the hardships the holidays can bring. Jesus set an example for us during his trip through Samaria. Giving isn't something we do during the holidays, just during the holidays, or just when we're in church. It's every day, all year long, anytime we are needed. Jesus' disciples were surprised to find their master talking to a woman, too. They knew he was tired, and they wouldn't have blamed him one little bit for taking this one off. But listen to what Jesus tells them. I'm going to go to verse 31 to 38. While the woman was away, the followers were begging him, Teacher, eat something. But Jesus answered, I have food to eat, and there is nothing, and there is, I have food that to eat that you know nothing about so the followers asked themselves did somebody already bring him some food and jesus said my food is to do what the one who sent me wants me to do my food is to finish the work that he gave me to do you say four more months to wait before we gather the grain but i tell you open your eyes look at the fields that are ready for harvesting now even now, the one who harvests the crop is being paid. He is gathering crops to, for eternal life. So now the one who plants can be happy along with the one who harvests. It is true when we say, one person plants, but another harvests the crops. I sent you to harvest a crop that you did not work. Others did the work, and you get to profit from their work. Yeah, that was 30. <laughs> Make sure I stopped in the right place. Harvest was once a year. It was a once a year event. Once a year, the crops are ready for picking. And for a few busy weeks, the farmers would go gather their crops. Jesus tells his disciples that the harvest of man is ready now. The harvest is needed every day. And there are people in real need, not just for food, clothes, water, shelter, but for Jesus. Who will meet their needs in January and February and the other nine months of the year? The need for giving doesn't end after Christmas, and neither should our desire to give. Whether you give your time, your clothes, money, I encourage you to look for new opportunities to give when the holiday is over. Jesus has given us so much. He's forgiven our sins. He's given us eternal life. Let's show him our gratitude. Isn't 
limited to Christmas. The harvest is ready. The workers are needed all year long. That's us. How long does it take your family to decorate for Christmas? A couple of days, a couple of weeks, an hour. <laughs> does your family decorate for any other holidays? Easter, uh, the fall, 4th of July. What's the craziest decoration your family sets out each year for any holiday? Like, do you have a big giant stuffed turkey that goes on your <laughs> dining room table? Or um, what else could you have? Some weird wreath on your front door? At Christmas time, we completely redecorate our houses for one month. As soon as the holiday is over, we put everything back in the storage. God doesn't want us to put our giving spirit away with our trees and lights. Giving is an all-year activity because we need to give. Because the need to give never stops. When we read that in John 4, 4 through 26, where was Jesus when this story took place? Right, at the well. And why was he sitting there at the well? Yes, man, he was tired. He was so tired and hot because it was in the afternoon. How many of you would want to get up and do some work if you were on a break like that? And Jesus was tired. He was constantly traveling, preaching, healing. Everyone wanted to meet him and see him. And that had to leave him exhausted. Whew. I have been exhausted before, but probably nothing like that. No one would have blamed him for sitting this one out. But when the woman at the well arrived, Jesus wanted to talk to her. And what does he tell this woman that she needs? Do you remember? Living water, right. And how did the woman respond to Jesus' words? Ah, <laughs> I'll take your living water. Come on. I won't ever have to come here and get water again. I won't be thirsty. Oh my gosh. And what did Jesus tell the disciples about the harvest? It was ready. It's ready. When Jesus spoke of the harvest, what was he talking about? People. He's talking about people who need Jesus. And we are the workers who are to gather those people. We're to go out and tell them about Jesus and give to them and help them and show them what Jesus is like, right? Harvest was once a year, and, and it, like Christmas, it's a once a year thing. But Jesus is telling the disciples that harvesting souls is not a once a year event. People need Jesus all year long. They also need food and water and shelter and clothing all year long. So giving isn't just one month of the year, is it? It's every day. <laughs> and what are some ways that we can remind ourselves to give beyond Christmas? I have something that I'm going to be giving out next Sunday. Starts our first Sunday back together again. I'm going to give you something while we're there. I'm going to post it on our Facebook page. And it's a list so that you guys will have a list of things we can do all year long. So how can we plan to make our giving a year-long process? By using this list I'm going to give. By looking for ways that we can give to people all year long. Are there things you can give besides money? Of course. Yes. Clothes, food, time, help, encouragement. We did a manger project. We, um, we, we are filling this manger. You know, maybe the manger isn't something that you put away when you put away your Christmas. Maybe the manger is something that you leave out all year round and you put stuff in for the homeless shelter as you collect it. We were collecting potato packs, potato flakes, dried potatoes, and the packs or boxes at our church were collecting them. Every time we went to the store, we picked up a handful of bags of potatoes and we're giving them to the pastor's pantry. Keep doing it. Every time you go to the store all year long, Put potatoes in your manger. There are so many opportunities 
that you can think of all year round to help to give. You can put clothes in there. You can give um, give of your time. You can do things. We're gonna we're gonna keep on talking about this. This is not the end of giving. Just because this is the last lesson in in December, this is not the end of giving for Community Church Expedition kids. Okay. The need to give doesn't go away when Christmas trees do. Make your giving a year-round activity and ask God to use those gifts to lead others to Christ. Wow. This month, the lessons on giving have really impacted me and made me think hard. And I'm looking hard at myself this upcoming year to make sure that I am giving all year round. How about you? You ready to join me? All right. Well, I will see you in person next week, I hope. Um, and if not, I'm still going to be doing the videos here. You'll still find this here. And hopefully you'll be able to get back together with us sometime soon. I love you guys. And I sure do miss being with you. But remember that Jesus loves you so much more. You guys, let's pray and we'll say goodbye. Bow your heads and close your eyes. God, thank you for giving us lessons on giving examples about giving, ways to give. Thank you for teaching us that if we give, we should give with a heart of gratitude, happy to give and not worried about getting back. That if we give, we're giving to you through other people. God, you're wonderful. We thank you so much for all you are and all you do. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you guys soon. Love y'all.